Good morning everybody. Now today I wanted to do a much larger piece than I have been doing over the last few weeks. It's been a lot of fun over this last Inktober to create loads of ideas in a much smaller format, but I really wanted to flesh something out and do something a lot larger because I don't know about you guys, but I just, I like the space. I like a bit of breathing room when I paint and I draw, or I paint especially. So I'm moving up to A3 today and it's gonna be a little bit longer, but I also wanted to go through the process of how I plan out a larger piece like this. So like most of the things that I end up drawing, it's usually an idea that either pops into my head or maybe a dream I've had or just some way that maybe the things that I've been thinking about at the time have all collated into some image. I think that's where most of my ideas come from. And with this one, I just had this clear image of this woman rising out of a river and I knew that I wanted to try and find a way of showing that in a style that I not only felt at most comfortable to show and to draw it as, but also a way that is almost unique to me, if that makes sense. I wanted it to be something that felt like something I could only make. I want to create more artwork that has more of a feeling of like a, a unique style that kind of represents how I feel or the most comfortable way that I draw, I guess. <laughs> not, not to sound self-obsessed, but I just want to have more of my own personal attributes within my paintings, I guess. So after playing around with certain ideas and looks in my sketchbook and trying to hammer out some of the smaller details, I took those images into Photoshop and tried to collate them into a rough composition. I showed this a little bit with red, but I think it's a lot of fun to try and break up simple sketches and begin blending colours or begin working out basic shapes. And to do that on Photoshop, I think it's a lot easier because you can just transform and change things very quickly. And then you can just print out a rough version, which is what I did, and you can sketch on top and scribble. And all of this work means that when you start playing with mediums that are a lot harder to erase, so you just can't erase them and you're just gonna have to deal with what you've done. At least for me, I can feel a lot more comfortable in what I'm doing. And yeah, it just allows me to be more confident and especially with something like this, or the work that I personally really like, which is more graphical and very sharp, clean lines. If I don't feel like I can do that hand movement or do that quick sweep with my hand or anything like that, if I don't feel like almost warmed up. <laughs> it's like I'm getting ready for a marathon and if I don't feel like I've done those proper warm-ups I feel like no I'm just gonna I'm gonna cramp out I'm gonna have to end up chucking this piece of paper out and I'll just never be able to make the distance with it so yeah this is kind of like my warm-up I guess and I don't really think it's completely necessary. I think I could create a piece of art without doing it but I don't know, it just makes me feel better about the piece of work before I start it, if I do all these little preparations. After using ink over the last month, I really started to like that medium. I kind of always went to watercolour after I did pen work, and I do love watercolour, and I think it adds almost like a ethereal look to a piece of work. The sharpness and brightness of the colours of ink are really... I just love the vibrancy of them. And when I was thinking about this piece, and the koi fish specifically, I knew I wanted those brighter oranges and reds and blues, just all of those brighter colours in this piece, and I just didn't think that watercolour would offer that sharpness that I really wanted. It's funny because looking at the piece after it's finished, as I'm talking now, I'd be interested in how people see this, because the way I originally imagined it was this woman almost draped in a dress of koi. Like she's coming out of this river, she's just breaking apart the waves and her whole body is decorated by these koi fish. Almost like a bizarre form of mermaid, I guess. Or like a lady of the lake kind of idea. I just wanted to show this woman who is draped in the fish of a river, I guess, and the train is that koi fish. And the train of the dress she's wearing is the koi fish coming up and eating kind of idea. <laughs> so that sounds a bit weird, <laughs> but that was kind of the idea I was going with. But now when I look at it, it almost looks as if she's melting into the koi fish. It's like it's reversed. It's like the woman existed and falls into the koi fish rather than the koi fish make up the woman, if that made any sense. <laughs> 
It's funny because you probably noticed in the Photoshop version, I tried to subdue all of my colour palettes to just this kind of blues and greens and yellows. But the second I get that ink on the page, I go straight to oranges and reds and browns. And I think a lot of that is based on how sharp the line work looked in person. This specific brush pen offers such a dark black ink that it almost felt like that softer light colour would only really with watercolour and maybe that's a remnant of me using watercolour so often before Inktober that I'm still thinking in colour palettes that would match watercolour best. But the second the inks were out it, it's like it changed how I was feeling towards the colours. As you probably noticed I've tried to continue the style of character that I began developing in red and I'm really liking the look of these characters. It might just be me <laughs> but I really like the composition and shaping of it and because I actually feel comfortable drawing people like this I feel a lot more confident about trying to create the characters that I've been thinking about recently you know sometimes ideas just I often have these like bigger ideas of something a bit more complicated like a you know a lady whose dress is made of koi fish <laughs> But because I don't feel like I have the practical skill to be able to achieve it in a realistic way, as if it has to be fairly realistic, then I almost shy away from those ideas and I don't follow them through as much. So I'm really happy that I'm starting to find a way of drawing people that I feel comfortable drawing. You know, I've always drawn in a very technical style, a very sharp, clean black lines on white paper, no colour. I think that's just the way that you develop if you follow more of like a graphical and architectural style of drawing. You know, it's my most practiced style of drawing and I do love it, it's not that I dislike it, but I could never find a way of making it cohesive with more organic forms. And to me, this style of character is offering me an ability to merge the two. And I'm just really happy with it. I'm just really happy that I finally found a way of doing that. Even if it is in a very simplistic style, I am really happy with it. And I already have an idea for another larger piece that I want to do. I won't say too much, but it's to do with a very tiny elephant. <laughs> That's, that's going to be one of the weirdest hints. <laughs> but I really hope you guys will like it. And that's really it for today. I know I didn't really go into any other massive topics with this one. I really just wanted to talk about how I'm trying to develop my style and just the future move towards how I'd like to do the next few pieces of art. It'd be really nice, I think, to have a collection of these almost like fantasy world women who are just this like weird or like tattoo style graphical women who can just merge with something very bizarre. I don't know, I, I just, I think this would be a really interesting path to follow and ideas just keep coming to me with it I guess. So I'm really excited about continuing this series and I really hope you guys enjoy these pieces of art and like the style and if you have any thoughts on it or feelings towards it I would really enjoy hearing them. I hope it wasn't too dull to hear me talking about myself constantly. <laughs> I have the feeling that if you've been listening to these videos for a while, I think you're getting used to me talking about myself. <laughs> but either way, I really hope you enjoyed this work and I'll see you again in the next few days.